we're in the wild forest on what's known as Ruskin land in the middle of the wild forest. And this place has history, has Ruskin history. There's also an amazing collection of mature oak trees, which are about 80 or 100 years old. And there is this incredible resource that they don't quite know what to do with. The event begins with a presentation by each of the groups, a brief presentation where they explain where they're coming from, what their agenda is, what they're thinking of exploring for the three-day event. At that point, people choose their groups, and typically there are about eight or ten people per group. And from that point onwards, people go off into the woods and they start this three-day process of designing and making. Part of my initial curation of this was that I wanted really diverse takes on making. And I tried to bring together an incredibly diverse set of practitioners that on paper you might think had nothing in common, but each was interested in what the act of making could bring to architecture. The event is very much a piece of research. We like to think of it as a piece of research and that what we're engaged in is something which is part of a bigger picture of exploring maybe something that's related to the work and the practice. So each group is working perhaps with a theme that is lasting beyond the three days. But beyond the architecture of the event, there's a lovely thing that's happening where groups are eating together in the evening they're camping together. There's a lot of discussion between groups as to what they're investigating and perhaps how it relates to their work outside beyond this event. The other really important aspect of the event is that we have invited talks <laughs> on two of our three evenings. So we'll try and invite architects, but we'll also invite people to talk about the context that we're in. And hopefully that weaves back into the work that we're doing in groups during the day. this act of getting together in summertime, sharing knowledge, eating together, going to talks and talking to one another, learning from one another, being in one place without the world, without the rest of the world as a distraction. It's incredibly potent. This year we're working with oak for the first time, which is a totally different experience. It's a very, very different material to the softwood that we're used to working with. And the first couple of years we actually worked with builders' merchants' materials which were not from the place. 
I think it was two years in that we started using material from the place that we were working in. So the material palette also is beginning to be defined by the context that we're working in. Each studio in the woods has a very different flavour. We've never done it more than two years in one place. And we keep moving it because we want to make it fresh and different every time. I think this place in the wild forest, on this Ruskin land, in the Wild Forest Community Land Trust small holding, there's a very different focus this year, which is that they want to use this knowledge in order to disseminate that around this community. So they have this resource of this oak, which they don't know what to do with. 80% of it goes to firewood, and 20% maybe will be sold. Um, it's not good quality. And they've asked us to really think about how we could use this oak, architecturally, commercially, or in any other fashion. The variety of the structures that end up being built very much depends on who you've invited to lead the groups. We've got a really incredible range this year. We've got one group working with absolutely the raw material, the crown of the tree, the twisted parts that are left lying on the forest floor. We've got a group using a robot arm to make musical instruments out of relatively precise milled pieces of timber. We have somebody making a giant truss which is out of the smallest pieces of timber that you can get but the high quality stuff in the heart of the oak tree. We have somebody building tall, somebody building horizontally. We've got very different pieces of research and there's a real range in terms of the material used, the approach taken and the context that people have chosen to work in.
pretend that it's Judith at school. I was thinking that the, the drone should go into the bottom of afternoon before the sunset uh, and then start to kind of see what was passing. I wondered back quietly to myself before we put them together back. <laughs> This is really kind of one of our, our key starting points. I think the biggest surprise for me about Studio in the Woods and what I, what I enjoy because it's so surprising is that it's amazing how much you can do in three days with a group of ten people. It's, it, it, every time it surprises me that you, you start off with having not designed anything on a Friday morning and by a Sunday morning you have a pretty substantial structure that a group of 10 people have made together that has a very clear design intent. And it's incredible. I mean, we take years designing a project in an office. So the speed with which we produce stuff is quite extraordinary. <laughs> 